Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to day two of NaNoWriMo, which is only a few minutes later than I was shooting day one, but that's because I'm playing catch up. I haven't done any writing yet today. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, in the catch up video, um, I do have a, quite a few things on my plate today. I need to buy a new computer return the rental computer, which also means, oh yeah, get anything off of it that I might have saved there, which I've been very careful about not really saving anything on there uh, for the most part. Um, and, uh, and then I have an event this evening and an event to prepare for for tomorrow. Plus I want to write 2,000 words. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so it is now just about to be midnight if it's not already hold on it's 11 59 p.m. and just a few minutes ago I hit 42 40 words so staying on track with the 2,000 words a day just making it <laughs> um, I'm a little confused by the new nano website I did eventually obviously figure out where to put the words in um, there's all sorts of other stuff on that page that says I should be logging in when I write and I'm logged in so I don't understand if you know what that's about please let me know in the comments below because I'm very lost and confused and when I tried to figure it out in the forums I got more lost and confused anyway the topic I had decided I was going to talk about today also relates to the scene that I was working on rewriting today, that inciting incident. Part of the issue with it was I had too many people in there, but part of it was I hadn't worked out enough details of the magic system. I talked back in April a bit about hard magic systems versus soft magic systems, which is coming from uh, Sanderson's first law of magic um, and if I remember I will link his blog post on that below I don't think I had read the blog post at the time I had just heard a podcast talking about that the difference between a, a hard magic system where you have really clearly defined rules that you need to know what they are um, versus like Lord of the Rings. We don't actually know what Gandalf can and can't do and why. Um, and one of the conclusions that Sanderson came to is that, and I'm, I'm gonna try to get the wording right, the extent to which you can basically um, get away with using magic to solve a problem in your world depends on how well the audience understands magic. Meaning that magic tends more to be the solution in a harder magic system, whereas the solution tends to be a bit more human in a softer magic system, such as throw the cursed ring into a volcano. That's a pretty human solution to making a bad thing go away. Just throw it in a volcano and it's gone. As opposed to having to gather all sorts of arcane ingredients and chant something in a, a language that's unfamiliar or whatever, um, which Tolkien totally could have done. He was already inventing all kinds of languages, but that wasn't the point of his story. So he didn't make the magic complex made other things plenty complex, but not the magic. Um, so I was thinking that because of Vi's underlying motivations for everything she does, the solutions she's going to need to come to, I was originally thinking had to be pretty strictly mundanely human. But then I realized that's not quite it. 
she needs to find balance between the magical world and the non-magical world. Um, or the magical world and the mundane world. And how to, to live in both of these worlds, essentially. Even though they're really the same world. Just so we're clear. I'm not actually having her hop dimensions or something. Um, although that'd be cool. Maybe in one of the later ones. But uh, for now, there's no dimension hopping. It's just that she's trying to balance the basically these two aspects of her life. Um, and she thinks she can only have one or the other. If ultimately she needs to find some sort of synthesis between them, then probably this needs to be a magic system that's neither really hard nor really soft, but somewhere in the middle. So, I've developed the system a little further, um, discovered something completely new while I was writing the scene. Um, yeah, definitely falls under the category of be careful what you wish for. If I can figure out which one from last November. I know there was one um, vlog where I talked about uh, really wanting my antagonist to be really complex. You know, like an, an Eric Killmonger level of complex that you absolutely understand their motivations. You're even actually agreeing to some extent you just wish they'd stop killing everybody. <laughs> um, sort of on that idea. Uh, yeah, be careful what you wish for because it, it is getting that complex. Um, that'll ultimately be a good thing. Just at the moment, it has me scratching my head a bit here and there of how is this ultimately going to work out? But it, it will. It'll work out. I think I'm probably going to talk a little more about Sanderson's Laws um, probably at a, a later time because as I was reading through them and thinking about my magic system, I stumbled across some things and went, ooh, I, mm, more stuff I need to think about. So this is already quite long enough for a day that I'm pushing it right up to midnight and it is, of course, now past midnight. Thank you. Goodness, the clocks go back tonight because I'm going to need that because I've got a pretty early day tomorrow. So on that note, I will just invite you to comment either here or on Discord, whatever you might choose to add to the conversation, your own experience with developing magic systems. Um, do you look at them as being hard versus soft or do you have some other way of sort of classifying different magic systems and what their purpose is um, or, or what the type of magic system might mean about the story. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So like, like I said, leave them below, leave them on Discord. Um, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.